Hey guys, my name is Phil and welcome to another video. Previously on Phil's Computer Lab, we had a look at boosting DOS graphics performance and how to get started with MS-DOS mode super easy. Those who have been watching my previous videos, you might have noticed that I'm using SD cards in my benchmark machines. SD cards are very cheap. At the local post office, I can get a 16 gigabyte SD card for just 10 Australian dollars. The sizes, the capacity is also perfect. 8, 16, 32. These are really good for older machines that might have a BIOS hard drive limitation in the BIOS. The access time is very low, they are silent and they consume low power. It's also very easy to load games onto them. You can just remove the SD card from your retro gaming machine, pop them into a card reader and off you go. You can just copy games back and forth. You can also install Windows without an optical drive that way. Just copy the Windows 98 installation files into a separate folder. What you need is an SD to ID adapter and there are quite a few models floating around. I recommend you have a look on eBay. I'm not going to link uh, a particular model because there are so many regions and prices and all sorts of other differences. So just go to eBay, type in ID to SD adapter and you should find something in your area. One issue with these adapters, they don't have a master slave jumper, so it is best to use them with a single drive. However, some optical disk drives do work, but you might have to try out a few in order to get lucky. Apart from that, they work as a standard hard drive. The activity lights flash on the adapter, but also the ones on the case will work. All you need to do is plug in the device to the ID, port on your motherboard, insert the SD card and the BIOS should auto detect the correct size. Now let's assume this is a factory new drive. It is usually already partitioned and formatted with FAT32. However, I do recommend that you delete the existing partition and create a new one. After the reboot, just format your partition. And usually with a factory new SD card, you will have issues with the drive not booting. And I had to do this with every single SD card. You just have to boot your Windows 98 disk and type in the command fdisk forward slash mbr which will recreate the master boot record and then your drive should boot just fine. And that's really the only tricky thing. Everything else is just like a standard hard drive. So you boot from your Windows 98 CD and you install Windows 98 just like on any standard hard drive. Let's have a quick look at the performance. In the background, we've got some benchmark results from the ATTO disk benchmark. Now, I found that a lot of people are obsessed with transfer rate, looking at 160 megabytes per second. Now, these adapters are limited to around 24 megabytes per second, but that is heaps. What is much more important is the access time and the performance with small files. And Looking at the graph, we can see that the performance with small drives is really good and so is the access time, it's basically zero. Very important is that you get a decent SD card. The SanDisk Ultra that I got is nothing high-end, but it's better than a no-name brand. So stay away from no-name stuff and get something decent. There are tons of reviews out on Amazon or Newegg, or you can have a look on uh, photography websites that review SD cards. The other comment I need to make about loading times in games, it has often very little to do with the storage and much more with the processor. I'm using a machine here with a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 GHz and we can see Quake 3 loads quite fast. Now if you're dealing with a slower Pentium 2 or K6 machine, SuperSocket 7 or something like that, it doesn't matter if you got the fastest solid state drive in that machine, the processor will hold everything back and it will still take quite a long while to boot and and Quake 3 will also take a long time to load. So in my opinion, these are awesome value and I do recommend you should check them out. They are cheap. The adapters themselves, the SD to ID adapters, they sell around for $10. The performance is decent. They consume very little power and are silent. And they also make your life very easy in terms of transferring data between your old machine and your new machine. So if you've got a, a game from GOG or you downloaded something, it's very easy to just copy it, copy it on the SD card and off you go. So that's what I think. I think they are well worth checking out. Let me know what you think down below in the description. As always, hit the like or the dislike button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And otherwise, I see you very soon with another video.